Poseidon is the Greek god of the sea, of earthquakes, and of horses. He's the elder brother of Zeus, who's king of the gods. Now this older brother, younger brother dynamic with Zeus and Poseidon is a bit surprising, considering that Zeus is the most powerful of the gods. Maybe he should be older. It's actually Zeus who confirms this relationship in Homer's Odyssey, calling his brother Poseidon presbutaton, or respected elder. And actually calculating who is older, Zeus or Poseidon, is a pretty complicated endeavor because of their regurgitation and rebirth from the stomach of Kronos during the birth of the first generation of gods. Now Poseidon, king of the sea, is very prominent in Homer's Iliad and plays a major if limited role in the Odyssey. However, interestingly, he becomes less and less of a factor in later, later mythological stories and cycles. Poseidon is not the most omnipresent god in Greek mythology. Poseidon is old, even as gods go. He belongs to an old stratum of Greek religion. Linear B tablets discovered in the palaces of Knossos and in Pylos reveal that he was a particularly prominent deity, boasting a sanctuary, a cult, and even most likely a wife. His local importance to the southwest of the Peloponnesus is probably reflected in Nestor's sacrifice to Poseidon, as is told in Homer's Odyssey, a poem which does reflect elements of Bronze Age society. The etymology of his name almost certainly includes the vocative pote, lord, but the second element, da, is ambiguous. It has been hypothesized that it means earth, and that Poseidon is therefore husband of the earth. As far as immediate family goes, in certain sources he is married to the Nereid Amphitrite, a sea goddess who controls sea monsters, and has a son named Triton. His children in myth are not especially numerous, but they are fairly prominent. Poseidon's son Polyphemus by Phaosa is the famous cyclops who encounters Odysseus on his wanderings. Poseidon is the father of Neleus and Pelias by Tyro and Otos, and Ephialtes by Iphimedea. Poseidon and the Danaid, a Mumone, are the parents of Nauplios, the father of Palamedes, and a perfidious enemy of the Greeks who returned from the Trojan War. Other children are variously the heroes Butes, Euadne, and Orion. Now Theseus, the Athenian hero, is a very interesting case. The classical poet Bacchylides tells us that Poseidon is the father of Theseus, and there are various iconographic images which confirm this connection to Aithra, Theseus' mother. But maybe Theseus' father is the mortal Aegeus. It's an interesting comparison. There are facts which point to both genealogies. It was contested. Theseus, of course, is the great king of Athens, the mythological founding hero of the most famous polis in the ancient world, who established uh, order and unity in the archaic period in Attica. Poseidon's connections with Athens are complex. The ancestral king of Athens is Erechtheus, who is identified in some ways with the god Poseidon. The same altar serves both of them, but the temple on the Acropolis in the middle of Athens was not the Poseidon, but the Erechtheion. And then, of course, there's the myth of a contest between Poseidon and Athena for Attica, which is depicted on the Parthenon itself. Poseidon asserted his claim by producing a saltwater spring, but Athena prevailed by planting the first of Attica's famous olive trees. Here's a version of the story. Poseidon once had a quarrel with the goddess Athena over Athens. At that time, Athens and the surrounding countryside was a piece of land which each one wished to own. At last they asked the other gods to settle the dispute for them. So at a meeting on Mount Olympus the gods decided that the one who should make the most useful gift to the people should have the land. When the trial came, Poseidon thought that a spring of water would be an excellent gift. He struck a great blow with his trident upon a rocky hill that stood in the land, and a stream of water gushed forth. But Poseidon had lived so much in the sea that he had forgotten that men could drink only water that was fresh. The spring which he had made was extremely salty, and it was of no use to the people at all. Then Athena, in her turn, caused an olive tree to spring up out of the ground. When the gods saw how much use men could make of its fruit and oil, they decided that the goddess had won. So Poseidon did not get the land. But ever afterward the people showed the salt spring and the olive tree to visitors to their acropolis, as a proof that the trial had taken place. Poseidon has a connection with and an ability to sire magical horses. His well-known epithet Hippios marks his association with horse racing and breeding. In myth, he sleeps with Medusa, and when Perseus beheaded the Gorgon, a horse and armed warrior Pegasus and Creosaurus uh, leapt from her body. Similarly, Poseidon sleeps with a wrathful goddess, one of the Aranes, by the Tilpusian spring in Boeotia, and gives birth to a rayon, 
the, fa the fabulous horse which carried Adrastus of Sicyon during the Seven Against Thebes episode in Myth. Poseidon is also closely connected with the Earth. His most famous Homeric epithet is Earthshaker, Enosegaios, or Enosikthon, and is the god of the earthquake. Poseidon shatters rocks with his trident and hurls them into the sea, and his anger was considered the cause of the earthquakes that hit Greece regularly. Ajax the Locrian, the Iliadic warrior who defied the gods during the sack of Troy, is plunged by Poseidon into the depths along with a rock upon which he had taken refuge. During the battle between the Olympians and the giants, the Gigantomachi, Poseidon hurls the entire island of Nisiros against the giant Polybotes. In many cities, especially on the western coast of Asia Minor, Poseidon was worshipped under the epithet of Asphaleus, or the Unshakable. The epithets Themiulikos, Threshold Holder, and Hedrias, of the Foundation, point in the same direction. Poseidon was also linked to men's associations, genealogy, and kinship. Behind his association with Bronze Age Pylos stands the tradition that the Ionians of Asia Minor originated from Greece, particularly from Nestor's Pylos. Their central sanctuary, the Panionion, is set on a lonely spot on Mount Mycale and is dedicated to Poseidon, the god. Other kinship groups considered Poseidon their ancestor, which explains his epithets Genesios and Gerethios, such as the Aeolians and the Boeotians, whose eponymous heroes, Aeolus and Boetius, were his sons. Similarly, although the evidence is sparse, Poseidon is quite often identified as the single tribal ancestor and the origin of a uni or unifying power of community. According to Plutarch, all the descendants of the ancient Hellenes or Greeks were expected to offer sacrifices to Poseidon Patrogonios. His temples in Helice were on, among the meeting places for the Pan-Ionic League, as we said, and the early Iron Age federations that comprised Athens and its neighbors took part in his federation as well. Finally, Poseidon was also worshipped as the ruler of the sea. A picturesque description of the sea god is given in the 13th book of the Iliad. Here's Homer's account. Forthwith then he went down from the rugged mount, striding forth with swift footsteps, and the high mountains trembled and the woodland beneath the immortal feet of Poseidon as he went. Thrice he strode in his course, and with the fourth stride he reached his goal, even Ege, where was his famous palace in the depths of the mere, golden and gleaming, imperishable for ever. Thither came he, and let harness beneath his car his two bronze-hooved horses, swift of flight, with flowing manes of gold, and with gold he clad himself about his body, and grasped the well-wrought whip of gold, and stepped upon his car, and set out to drive over the waves. Then gambled the sea beasts beneath him on every side from out the deeps, for well they knew their lord, and in gladness the sea parted before him, right swiftly sped they on, and the axle of bronze was not wetted beneath, and unto the ships of the Achaeans did the prancing steeds bear their lord. Besides this connection with the sea, again we see him in comparison or conflict with the goddess Athena. Poseidon arouses or calms the brute force of the sea. He does not help the pilot guide his ship through the storms. That assistance is given by Athena. In particular, Poseidon is master and the helper of fishermen. In visual imagery, he is shown with a fish, often a dolphin, in his hand. The trident harpoon, the weapon carried by Poseidon as his distinguishing attribute from the time of Homer, was an implement of a specific ancestral fish hunt dedicated to Poseidon. A portion of the haul from this fishing hunt was taken as an offering to his sanctuary at Sunion for an important festival meal. The sea, as well as its ruler Poseidon, has a strong negative connotations for the Greeks, as well as positive. While he was not to be neglected, he was situated literally at the margins of the civilized world. Poseidon's place at the fringe of the Greek polis was underscored by the location of his sanctuaries outside of the city walls. Many of his temples were near the sea. Some examples are at Tainarum, Sunium, and Hermione, while others were located at the foot of mountains, for example with Mantinea, or on a river as at Methedrium. The significance of these locations seems clear. Despite his power, Poseidon has no place within the society of the polis. His sanctuary on the Isthmus, where the Panhellenic Isthmian Games took place, is to be seen in the context of Corinth's positioning as the controller of all the seas and all the ships making for Athens, and all were greeted from afar by the shining white Poseidon temple on Cape Sunium. The lord of the depths of the sea was also a god of oracles. The oracle of the dead at Cape Tynaron was dedicated to Poseidon, and he is even mentioned as the original lord of the Delphic seat. There is also a strange connection where the god's intimate enemy, Odysseus the seafarer, 
on his journeys, reached even into the underworld in search of an oracle, and then becomes the priest of Poseidon who founds a new cult place of the god, which was probably an oracle of the dead. Now in conclusion, in the Homeric poems, Poseidon's character is peculiar. He's great and powerful and of a certain gravity, but he's always decidedly a member of the older generation, and if anything, sort of eager or anxious in an avuncular kind of way. He is required to endure many embarrassments, he is unable to hasten the destruction of Troy, and he can only disrupt, not prevent, Odysseus's homecoming in the Odyssey. Poseidon sires the horse and rules the sea, but it is Athena who invents bridle and bit and who builds the first ship. She triumphs over him in Athens as well. Poseidon remained an embodiment of elemental force. Sea storms and earthquakes are the most violent forms of energy directly encountered by man, while the horse was the strongest energy which man could then control. One can struggle with such power, and one must always take account of it, but clarity and illumination could only come from the gods Athena or Apollo. And really, when it came down to it, the only thing entirely irresistible was the thunderbolt of Zeus. Thank you guys for watching very much. If you have any questions or comments or any queries or concerns, just leave them down in the comments below. And if you like this video, please do hit the like button and subscribe. It would help me very much. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.